What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. So Google dropped Android 14 beta 4 today and actually added compatibility for the Pixel Fold. Uh, I'm super excited to try it out on this baby here. So if you guys don't follow my channel, make sure to subscribe. We just talked about in the last beta drop that it is stable, we've gone stable, and this could be one of our closest and final build yet before the official release of Android 14. We know all the features at this point, now it's just gonna be a little bit of UI tweaking and a couple of background strings that are gonna be changed, but we haven't had anything to test like the F Pixel Fold. In addition to the Pixel Fold, the Pixel Tablet is now eligible as well for the beta program. I am excited to get the update installed. We've opted in already for the beta program and really just dive in. Let's go ahead and take a look at it and see exactly what updates have been made for this beta build for the Pixel Fold. Let's go. Okay, so jumping right into it, I wanna go ahead and call this out right off the bat. This is probably gonna be one of our longer videos that we have done, just because there's so much UI tweaks and changes, and obviously it's the first beta for the Pixel Fold. It's obviously the fourth beta for Android 14. It is stable. I wanna go over some of the UI tweaks and really just run through the settings, so it's probably gonna take a bit of time to do that. Let's go ahead, get started, and as you can see right off the bat, the lock screen clocks are now here for the Pixel Fold. You can now customize them. We'll go through them, show you what they look like. If you guys follow the channel, you know that in my past videos I've showed you, this is one of my favorite, and I really do think it still looks great on this form factor on the Pixel Fold. One big change too that we'll talk about, when your device is locked now, as long as you have a over six digit pin, you can now bypass the the have to uh, warrant or approve the passcode. So what I mean by that is if you want to unlock it and you put in your code, you don't have to press enter anymore basically and you're good to go. As you can see in the notification shade and your quick toggles, this looks very similar to what it did before. Nothing really new here. But if you guys can see the actual sound logo up top, and I apologize for the camera struggling to focus, the sound profiles have kind of changed images. You can see they look a little tweaked right there. Beyond that, jumping into settings, when I was experimenting and looking through everything, I did see something that seemed pretty interesting and new, and I don't remember seeing it before, but when you go into your sim and into those settings, there is a separate link now, or toggle down here for VO 5G, so that's voice over uh, 5G, used to be Volite for voice over LTE, etc, etc. In the comments, guys, let me know, keep me honest, has this always been here? I don't recall seeing it. It was actually toggled off initially, and obviously this is going to be carrier specific, so if it is here, let me know. This might not be new, but it was new for me to realize. Beyond that, in the settings menu, there is not too much else that has really changed here connected devices for pairing and all that still looks basically the same as before as well. So yeah, nothing else there. Apps, always going to be the same. You have your default apps, Google Assistant settings and all that. You can obviously turn on, again, nothing new here, but continued conversations. You can hold the power button, see all Assistant settings if you want, and it'll take you right into the Google app for that. Nothing new there either. You can obviously check a little bit of difference in a visual appearance here for the battery life and usage. You can see what's been using it on a little better graph. You can go for screen time, notifications received, and time open now. Set timers for your apps, nothing new there. Uh, and then you can see app usage or app usage by battery. Special app access to see if you gave anything additional access but nothing really great or call out worthy here. Notifications as well. You have your regular app notifications turned on, on and off on an as needed basis. You obviously do have the most recent you can shuffle through, all time, all apps, or turn off notifications for everything. Notification history if you wanna turn that on and off. Again, nothing new there as well. Conversations. And then bubbles obviously is still here. If you want to have those floating bubbles for certain apps, 
Um, you can see here it says some conversations will appear as floating icons on top of other apps if you want those for quick access. Device and app notifications, same old, same old. Notifications on lock screen, same options we've always had. Sensitive notifications, show it or don't show them when the screen is locked. Same settings for do not disturb. Flash notifications if you want to turn that on. Um, yellow uh, flash for the screen if you want to have that on. So that will flash as well and you can preview it. Kind of a new one. I don't know why anyone would really want that. You can see it on your taskbar, but it is an option as well. Battery usage again, kind of like we were talking about earlier. You can see what's been going on. Seven minutes since the last full charge. I do like the new interface here a lot better than what was going on in the past. Uh, with you not truly being able to see a 24 hour battery usage, now you obviously can. And if you want to go into your system apps and all of that, uh, you can do that as well. Nothing new. Battery saver, if you want to turn that on and off. Adaptive charging to help increase the lifespan of your device. Nothing new, still here. Battery percentage, battery widget. This is a cool addition, obviously. Again, not unique to Android 14, but you can add this right to your home screen, and that shortcut is right in your battery settings now, instead of having to jump into your widgets. Storage is storage. Sound and vibration. Obviously, as you can see, they have separated out Notification volume from media volume from ringtone volume to call volume and alarm volume. It is not as I guess simplified as before. It gives you a lot more control. You have your do not disturb, what ringtone you want, live caption if you want to keep that on and off. Now playing obviously with the ability to see your history. Nothing new there. Vibration and haptics. Same old, same old there as well. Default sounds. Clear calling if you want to turn that on. Uh, to kind of pr uh, prioritize your voice in your conversations. Lock screen sounds, charging sounds with vibration, tap and click, yada yada. Always show icon when in vibrate mode. That's pretty interesting, I didn't see that one earlier. For your display, you can see you have your adaptive display still, your lock screen for all the notifications again. Screen timeout, dark theme if you want to have that on. Screen saver, display size and text, gesture. Navigation or three button, nightlight, colors, adaptive, nothing really crazy here. I do, I want to say the verbiage here on smooth display is a little different. Uh, I always thought it was an LTPO display here that went from 1 to 120, but clearly it only goes from 6 to 120. thought that was pretty interesting as well. Wallpapers and styles. Okay, so this is kind of what we were just talking about with those new clocks. You can now click through and actually change them as you would like. Uh, it's very neat. I truly do like this a little better. And for those of you using a Pixel Fold, the shortcuts now you can customize instead of just having the options of Home and Google Wallet. Jumping into those clocks though, as you can see, you can change the color and size. Small simply keeps it like that, not the best. I like dynamic uh, and your color pattern. If we want to actually go ahead and change the clocks, it's a simple swipe as you can see and we'll run through a couple of those and show you. They're all the same ones that we saw already on the prior Android 14 beta builds, but it's good to see here on the Pixel Fold as well. And again, pretty simple. If you wanted to utilize, let's say this one instead, we can obviously keep it like that, lock the device, and there you go. I still think, like I said, actually I like that scribble look, that's not bad either. Let me go back out of that. Not too bad. Let's go ahead and change it back to what we were using prior. And there you go. Um, obviously it's going to change the color pattern, trying to adjust to the colors in the photo. I'm not going to leave that, I changed it as it was, but you do have some more color options as well, as you can see here, if you did want to change that up at all. Aside from that, not too much else on the changes. Again, you have a certain amount of new controls you can add for shortcuts. You have that camera option, do not disturb, flashlight, home, mute, QR code scanning, video camera, and wallet. The left is exactly the same as the right, so there's nothing extra you can add on either side. They're all universally the same. 
So yeah, then you have your more lock screen options, add your text like you always could, those shortcuts we just talked about, double line clock if available, now playing songs, always show time and info, that's basically your always on display. You want to tap and check to bright, uh, increase the, excuse me, to turn on the screen and lift to check to turn it on, basically wake it, and then also wait for notifications. Those are all old news. You do have some options in accessibility still. I'm not too familiar with this area, so we're going to skip over it just because we don't use it regularly. Security and privacy. You can see it is now a combined app, just like we were talking about before. And you can find everything to see if your system's up to date, device finders for find my device, security, and uh, obviously your device unlock options. You can see a little bit new uh, kind of UI tweaks here as well. If you wanted to go over and change what screen lock options you have, you can do that here, update your password and all that. Auto confirm unlock. This is what I was just telling you guys about earlier in the video, where now you can see it says unlock automatically. If you input a correct pin of six digits or more, this is slightly less secure than tapping enter to confirm. The password's right, it's right. I don't understand why hitting enter would differentiate that, but it is an option now. They should have had this all along. I'm glad they do. I still think if people had a four digit code, it should still auto unlock, but yeah, it's something. Enhanced pin privacy, that'll turn off the animation. That's always been there. Lock after screen, timeout, and button or power button instantly locks. So yeah, that is really it under the device unlock. You can obviously add here. Oops, let me change this. If you want to add face unlock, obviously, if your device is, uh, if it has it, the cap capability for it, your fingerprints, and how to unlock and verify apps. Location, obviously, if you want to turn that on, nothing really crazy there. Safety and emergency. This is where you will have all your medical inform information and your emergency contacts. You have your passwords and accounts, and your digital well-being. Again, nothing crazy or really unique to Android 14 Beta 4. Google services, obviously, all of the traditional settings, and your system updates. So, you can see, obviously, we are on Android 14 on that July 5th build. That was just checked. And one of the cool things in this build now is obviously, here's a new build number, but I'm going to show you we finally have our Easter egg here in a minute. The build number for you guys on this build for the Pixel Fold should be on UPB4. 230623.005. This is one of the new changes too. Before I go into that, you can now click on model. <coughs> Once you click on model, you'll get the model of the phone and the manufactured year. Pretty cool little update there. And all right, for that Easter egg, when you jump into the Android version and do your traditional clicks here, when you actually see the Android 14 logo, you can see stars kind of really being in the sky, kind of just traveling around. If you hold the logo, you'll see it'll start to shake here. And the lights are taking off. And now you have a little program here where you can control this little ship. Whichever direction you want to send it, you can do so. And if you get to the position, as you can see at the bottom here, if it wants to zoom in, Position, wherever you end up, if you get to zero, zero, you actually land near the sun. It's pretty neat. Um, you can see here, obviously, a couple little more Easter eggs here. Andromeda, IOTA, Class K, radius, mass, bodies, etc., etc. It's pretty neat. But if you're able to get to that location you want to get to, it will obviously take you to the sun. Pretty neat. Allegedly, there's other stars you can see, I believe, but I have not been able to come across that yet. Okay. So yeah, aside from that, not too much else. Same tips and everything that you can pull up regularly. That is it. Quite a bit to look at. I really do like the update on the Fold. Battery life has been good. Again, it's been stable. It's in a stable form, so we should be receiving the official release in the next coming month or so. We are right at the end of their timeline here for that, so beta program should be coming to a close in the near future. But aside from that, guys, what do you think? Are you excited for Android 14 in general? Are you excited to use it on your Fold? Let us know in those comments. Thanks for sticking through this long video with us, uh, and we'll catch you in the next one.
Peace.